Welcome. This class is about the market research. We're discussing about the investment process, market and marketing, and this third stage is about how companies and organizations conduct research on their potential market. We will recall the idea that the market is necessary for delivering and distributing the products, goods or services that our project investment is about. Let's proceed through the outline of this class. First of all, we will start with some general considerations about the idea of conducting research in a specific market. Secondly, we will address the information needs which are closely related to the investigation we're about to, to proceed of. Third, we will focus on the export market research. So, as you can see, we will start with two general topics and we will explore the tools and the necessary items related to market research. And then, at the end of this class, we will consider the specific situation in which our investment is targeting foreign markets and accordingly we should specify special characteristics related to foreign markets. Let's start with the general considerations. Together with the general considerations we will go through some specific definitions of market and market research. So, in general term, the market is the setting in which the project is to approach potential consumers of the goods and services to be produced. So, this is a relative idea about the fact that the general business concept related to the products, services or goods should be contextualized in a specific market situation. Accordingly, market research consists of collecting, organizing, and analyzing information concerning the setting. More specifically, if we recall the idea that a market is a specific setting, then we have to proceed in a sequential and organized way in order to collect, organize, and analyze information. So, we will develop the idea that at the first stage we have to gather some specific information related to the product or service we are about to deliver. Then we have to organize both in a procedural and in a methodological way all this amount of information we have collected so far. And on the third stage, we have to analyze such information in order to support the necessary decisions about project implementation. So, the first stage of this marketing research is going to be related to the collection of information, or conversely, what we might call the information needs. So, in this class we will focus on the, the theme of information and its treatment. In next class, as we will see, we will focus on the idea of data and the analysis of the data related to market research. Let's start with the way information is collected, which could also be defined as the sources of information. Information is collected by an individual or a group. So we might have different individuals interested in specific markets and or we could arrange team working activities related to the information gathering. From another standpoint, we could consider the fact that these individuals or groups might operate with a mandate 
which is types and quality of information. So the mandate is related to the definition of the scope of the investigation itself, meaning that information is collected by different actors through different methodology aiming to different scopes. Market research is about the analysis of all this gathered information, as we said already. Proceeding with the, the information needs, we might see that these needs are related to products and or segments, if they're relevant. So we might start from the general idea that we label the business idea or the business concept. And then we should focus on the specific functions of the specific product we're going to deliver. So either being a physical good or a service, in both cases, we need to specify as much as we can what kind of business idea is going to serve a specific market in order to collect specific information. Secondly, information should focus on the determinants of existing demand. So, as you might recall from the previous classes, determinants on Determinants of existing demand are related to the specific needs of individuals or groups of individuals, are related to the habits driving consumer behaviors, meaning that according to the different settings, we might have different utilization of the very same product being good or service. Then we have the cultural related aspects like the impact of tradition, the attitudes toward a specific product, and the last but not the least, the qualification of the several attributes and the perceived quality that each market could attribute to the product itself. Meaning that we might have the very same product and have very different perceptions of the same characteristics considered in different settings, being local or foreign markets. Third element for information gathering is about competition and supply. When it comes to competition, it's very important to gather information about what are the other companies' products and what are the other companies' strategic moves, or at least the company should gather as much information as it can in terms of anticipating the moves of such competitors. The same mandate is related to supply. So, so far it's pretty clear that our investment in terms of project should be hosted by an organization, so the organization should study both the competitors and the sources of raw materials and other utilities and services which are necessary for manufacturing the physical goods and delivering the services. Additionally, we should consider the external environment. So, as we explored already, the organization which is hosting the project is subject to different pressures by different actors and conditions coming from the external environment. The gathering of this kind of information is crucial for the market research too. Finally, we should consider the international trade. When it comes to international trade, as it will be more clear, when we will deal with the last part of this presentation today, is about regulations concerning both the local environment and the foreign env environments related to our partners. So, just to give you an idea, we might have a company related in, located in the United States, and the United States itself could have different 
uh, specific regulations according to the, the single state, which is composed in the United States. And additionally, we might have foreign partners coming from Poland or Brazil, and we should consider also the international trade policies related to Poland and Brazil, respectively. So this is the menu of the possible sp span of this information gathering. To be more specific about all these items, we could deepen a little bit more what is needed by the company, what, it, uh, what the company is looking for when it's gathering information. Product segment data. The first item is about the description of product and segment. Description which is about configurations, standards and segments. So let's try to be a little bit more specific about the sub-items. When it comes to configurations, it's the different versions of the very same product that could be targeted to a specific market. So if you consider sport equipment, for example, we might have the basic configuration for amateurs and the advanced configuration for sportmen. When it comes to standards, as we will see, we might have quality standards in terms of perceived quality by consumers, as well as safety standards when it comes to the conditions of safety related to the utilization of the, the same product or service. The same with segments. The identical good or service could be targeted to different segments of the same market. So if we consider the segments made by referring to the age of our consumers, we might have segments for newborns and segments for adults, for example. So all these information and this data should be collected with a specific referral to the description of the product and segment interception. The second item is related to the current uses. The idea of current uses recalls the concept of product life cycle that we dealt with already. I mean that during the startup and the growth phases, we know that consumers become more and more familiar with the utilization of products, which means that the current uses in a specific market might differ dramatically from the penetration phase and the, grow, the, the startup phase and the maturity or the decline phase. What is very important to collect in terms of data related to products and segments is everything that we could gather around substitutes and complementary products. Again, we might recall some ideas considering the substitutes as the products that could fulfill the same need for consumers, meaning that if we consider cars as a mean of transportation, we might have motorbikes, buses, trains, even airplanes as possible substitutes. So since the, com the competition is widened in this sense, we should gather specific information about the substitutes as well. Same thing for the complementary products. So if we still consider car as the focal product, we know that we might need complementary products like fuel or insurance policies. All these informations are crucial since the competitiveness of the product itself could be compromised or boosted by favorable conditions related to complementary products as well. The second general item we're describing is about the determinants of the existing demand. So, the existing demand, we noticed already that it's based, first of all, on the historical consumption. So we could gather information 
about the general trends related to sales of a specific products or the util about, about the utilization of a specific product. Secondly, we have regional distribution, which is very important when our market is widespread distributed and or when the regional attitudes toward the products could change. So we don't need just general historical, historical consumption information, but we have to gather as well regional distribution information. Then we have to deal with the seasonal and cyclical uh, characteristics of the product. So we're, if you're familiar with the idea that the time distribution is relevant in terms of sales, we might notice that the information could be uh, gathered around the fact that this very same product could be absorbed or rejected in a specific market according to the seasonability or the cyclical advancement of the, the, the need which is con connected to the product itself. Around the determinants of this existing demand, again, we might have innovations, both potential innovation uh, from our competitors or existing innovations already present in the market. The feedback about the return of information related to the existing situation. So if we are launching a new product in a new market, we should still co collect information about what other competitors have already experienced in a such a market. Historical price trends are very important too, meaning that since price, as we will see, it's a crucial element of the marketing strategy, the analysis of the prices which are practiced in a specific market is crucial for our uh, project assessment as well and for the definition of the market and marketing uh, research scope and lately for the marketing strategy. The third item related to the information we should gather is about competition and supply, as we've seen. So we focus on major competitors. We should analyze what are the specific characteristics of such competitors, size, strategy, segments in which they operate. What is the capacity utilization of such uh, competitors. When it comes to capacity utilization, we should recall that the capacity under utilization could represent a strategic entry barrier to a specific industry, meaning that if, we are in, if, if our intention is to penetrate a new market, we should be aware of the fact that the installed capacity of our competitors is already uh, exploited at 100%. If it's not, it means that our competitors can still produce and sell additional products with the same um, installed facilities, which is a, a more risky situation for the, 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 the possible newcomer as our project would be. Additional capacity, it's about what kind of capacity our competitors or our project could add to the existing situation. And this is particularly important when we're considering a modernization uh, strategy or integration strategy considering our installment. Exports are very important as well as imports. So we're familiar with the fact that the demand in a specific market is also related to the amount of products we are about to import from foreign countries as well as by the amount of products we were exporting to, towards different countries. 
Another item is the external environment. What is relevant when it comes to uh, the external environment? Technological trends, economic trends, politics and law, social cultural aspects, and environmental protection. So, at this stage of our program, we are already familiar with the first four elements. So, we should be particularly aware of the fact that if we're launching a new product, being good or a service, we should gather information about what the technology trends are, meaning that we should foresee the sustainability of our investment from a technological perspective in the future. Secondly, we should try to foresee the economic trends as well. In such a sense, the scenarios which are uh, frequently pictured by different global organizations could help the project assess in a more effective way what the, 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 the situation in the target market would be in the future. Politics and law, as we've seen, it's about the regulations uh, delivered and granted and provided by the local government related to the products and or to the services. Social cultural aspects are the driver of the consumer behaviors we've seen. So values, uh, traditions and other habits are a precious source of information when it comes to potential market expansion. The final item, the environmental protection, will be the topic of the very last class of this module. So we will complete the investigation about the assessment of a project investment and the implementation of a project investment through the analysis of the environmental impact of our project. So environmental protection regulations are particularly important since they could incentivate or constrain our, our initiative. When it comes to the international trade, exports, imports of products are necessary data for our analysis, as well as trade regulation, general and country specific aspects. So this is the incremental differ differential part of a generic project investment and a specifically uh, international-oriented project investment. When it comes to international trade, we have general um, concepts like these two ones, as well as very specific items that could represent additional incomes or additional costs for our organization. Namely, we should consider shipping and handling in terms of cost. So the availability of ports and infrastructures or skilled workers or competitors in general related to logistics should lower the cost down if the conditions are favorable for the company. On the contrary, should push up the cost if the market we are targeting is poor in terms of uh, physical and logistical infrastructures. What is very important is the existence and currently the information about the role of trade organizations and agreements operating in a specific area. So trade organizations could influence in a determinant way the relation between any potential new ventures and the hosting markets as well. Information about the existing plans and uh, the uh, expected and actual results that those kind of organizations have been able to perform in a specific market is crucial for the market research as well. So if we consider all the information that we gathered uh, so far, we have all the necessary elements for estimating the impact 
of our investment targeting a specific market. So we should have gathered information about product and segment, information about the potential consumers and their behavior, and the external environment, considering the competition and the suppliers, and the, the general factors as well. This analysis could be conducted targeting a whole country, as we've seen already, and or a region, and or a specific segment, is how, if our products, being physical goods or services, are targeting a specific uh, intersection of these three items, country, region, segments. Specific attention should be paid to the export market research. So the export market research is quite peculiar since it's based basically on the very same models of the market, traditional market research or the general market research. But we should consider several items that make this uh, market research more peculiar. Meaning that we should gather additional specific information related to experts. The point is that the distance between a local market and a foreign market is very relevant in terms of uh, potential success or potential failure for our investment. So by collecting additional information the company which is hosting the project should be able to fill the gap represented by the physical distance and by the so-called cognitive distance, which means that on the one hand we have quite an ignorant uh, company or organization targeting a new market. So everything that could not be explored in a physical way, in a, through a direct presence, should, should be uh, investigated to, through the information the company itself is able to, to gather. So the export market research is crucial in this sense that is helping an organization targeting a foreign market to gather additional specific information to complement the traditional scheme of the market research. So in general terms we should investigate the determinant of export demand, studied from several perspectives, considering the several areas that we should take in consideration. So, in a specific project, it's pretty rare that when we study the markets, we consider just one area. Uh, what is more likely is that the organization which is hosting the project consider more than one market, so um, that it, it will be able to formulate different scenarios according to the different ge geographic areas. Second, quality standards. Quality standards are extremely relevant when it comes to export. Uh, so when it comes to quality standards, we could have um, a different perceptions of the same characteristics um, considering the differences in the values and the habits of the local population. Uh, those kind of differences could be uh, explained, by, for example, if we consider the tastes about food. So we might have the exact same product olive oil, which is very popular in Italy, in Spain, and Greece, for example. If we try to export this product, we should consider the different tastes and habits related to food in general and to the specific product, which is olive oil. So if you're targeting an area where olive oil is quite unknown or where the average taste is about a softer uh, 
perception, qualitative perception of the strong flavor which characterizes some of the high quality European standards, the company which is trying to export such a product could be deluded by the fact that it's uh, in the company's perception the, the, the product itself could be exceptional and the perceptions of the local populations could be totally different. So the idea of quality standard it's very important because it's not, it's not just the design quality which is pushed by the companies uh, into the market but it's also the expected quality which is formulated by the, the existing and potential uh, consumers of such a product. So sometimes cultural differences could explain the clash that companies register on the market between the design quality and the perceived quality. Another issue is about material and safety standards. So exploring different areas in the world we might encounter different standards when it comes to safety. So again, if we consider foods, the traceability or the trackability of the ingredients and in the whole supply chain is crucial and mandatory in some national context. Whereas in other regional contexts, we might be exposed to a less prescriptive uh, law or regulation, which means that if we're targeting a foreign area for exporting our products, we should be aware and complying to the local regulations. The same with um, industrial goods like cars, for example. So different nations might state different laws and regulations when it comes to safety of vehicles driving on the, on the roads. So the very same product could be exposed to different constraints or opportunities considering the, um, the degree of compliance that the products have with the, the local regulations. Additionally, the strength of competitors could differ from market to market, meaning that if we consider our local company in a local area with local products, the position of such a company could be very strong considering the established competitors. But if we consider foreign areas, the very same company with the same, very same product and um, the, the, the when, 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 when such a, a company is trying to export its own products could meet the same competitors which are weaker in the local market and are stronger in the foreign market. So we might face the same actors, but in an arena in which those kind of actors could exploit after source, other sources of strengths. So they might be more competitive or more aggressive. The presence and the strength of competitors is crucial for the company, since um, those kind of information are necessary for formulating the strategies for entering new market, for example, but they are very useful in order to formulate some deterrence towards the competitor's behavior. In such a sense, the strength cannot be considered just in terms of market share or price aggressiveness but it should be considered also in multi-business companies in terms of competitive interrelations between one business unit and the other business unit. I mean, if a company is manufacturing and selling more than one product in more than one market, different competitors in different markets could study themselves and react or try to to, to, to scare the, the opponent by uh, being more aggressive or, or more defensive in a specific market where they're stronger and behaving in a totally different way in a market they were perceived 
the presence is weaker, which means that at the end of the day, we might have different companies studying each other and trading each other without moving just because they operate in different markets with different products and they are afraid of losing competitive advantage in a market and in doing so they renounce to react to some uh, pressures or aggressions in other markets by some competitors. So to sum up we might have the same actors behaving in different ways according to their local strength in the local markets. So these are the four elements that should be, take, should be taken in consideration when we consider the market research related to the specific aspects of experts. Now, all these elements could be considered if um, uh, are related to new or existing products, then the analysis might differ. Uh, this should be related to the international trade policy in the local area we're investigating and in the target area we are taking in consideration, as well as, as we were mentioning in the beginning, we should consider the international trade policies in the local areas of our partners. And finally, we should consider the international competitors, uh, meaning that, for example, multinational companies could serve different markets. So we might compete with the, with the same company, again, in different business interceptions and different local areas. That's all for today. You can find, as usual, additional information on our website. Thank you.